tell us a little bit about how your creative process maybe changed from writing separately, but once you all came together. See, we're all friends. We all knew each other. We all come from the same band, Kenny Gamble and the Romeos. This was a great band, and that band was something that, that brought us all together. First, Tommy was in the band. I met Tommy one day. I was walking his sister, Barbara. It was my main girl. She asked me one day to walk her home. So I walked her home, and I heard a piano, somebody playing a piano when we got to, to our house. I said, who's that playing the piano? She said, that's my brother, Tommy. I said, let me meet him. And that same day, me and Tommy sat down and we wrote some sure songs. Did. I still remember them songs right now. Give me the right. It was one of them. That's right. How I Met Huff was a whole nother story altogether. We replaced Tommy in the band with with, uh, with Huff. And we worked at a place in Jersey called the Redis Hi-Hat. We would take songs that were already recorded and change the arrangement of them. Because when I come to Philly, I didn't know nobody. But I knew Gamble when I got into the band. But what's, what's unique about that situation was when Tommy left the band, now the band had to work that weekend. That's right. We had one rehearsal. And I mm -hmm. knew how to play the drums too. So, yeah, you had to know how to play the drums because right. that so was very that was fortunate the whole thing. to find a guy from Camden that could play that same role mm -hmm. and you, ne and you didn't drum. miss that gig on the weekend. You never missed a beat. You've been quoted saying that it's funny because many people can write music, but there aren't many people who can hear music. Can you expand upon that just a little more? I go to sleep, wake up with music on my mind. Mm -hmm. Every time I sit down and play it, I have the tape recorder running because there's no telling what I'm going to come up with. We used to write every day. Every day. We're writing and arranging every day, sometimes three or four arrangements a day within hours and things. We call studio time, the song would be ready at 10, call studio time, get there at 12, musicians get there at 3, bang, we're off and running. We, did, we, did, we never thought about how hard it was. We didn't do it for the money, we did it for the, for the love of what we were doing. The, the range of songs and the kind of songs that we wrote, I can see how they, they last. When I listen to them now, I, I, I amaze, it amazes me just to hear all of the intros, like on Deeper In Love With You. There's so many, there were about three or 4,000 records that came out a week. So what, what makes your record uh, any better than someone else? So something's gotta be better. The songs gotta be better. Well, our songs are better, our arrangements are better, everything. But the way it hits you, all three of us have been given to you from the very beginning. The very first 10 seconds, oh, I kind of like that. Let me hear what the next 10 seconds sound like. Pretty soon you're listening to the whole song. But if it's not there, if it's sad from the very beginning, mm -mm -mm. One thing you got to realize is that the first person to hear them songs is the disc jockey. Jimmy Bishop used to tell me, he said, man, you got to hit them in the first five seconds. I wanted to know what made the organization stand out. Back in the day, where we were trying to find someone to represent our music. I know that uh, I was working with a guy named Jerry Ross. And Jerry Ross is the one who introduced me to BMI. The beauty of it was is that BMI was welcoming many African-American writers. It wasn't that many African-American writers with ASCAP. ASCAP was pretty much, well, classical music and so forth. BMI was, was opening up everything for young African-American writers. 